Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Here's your news now. There are more than a half dozen restaurants serving pizza in and around Wayne, yet there is only one serving up grilled cheese sandwiches and desserts. Replacing Piece of Pizza, The Meltdown, opened on March 30th. This past week, Rob interviewed the general manager and asked what makes his sandwich shop stand out. Meltdown is a grilled cheese shop. Um, it's kind of a newer concept where we offer 12 different gourmet sandwiches, ranging from the classic, like mom used to make everybody as a kid, to one of our most popular sandwiches, the Baja Melt. That has uh, shredded chicken, Monterey Jack cheese, cilantro, tomato, and avocado on it. And we actually add a nice Baja butter to that sandwich to customize it a little more, give you a little crunch when we grill it. A couple other things that are really cool about here, we not just grilled cheese, we also have a great chopped salad, soups. We also have an ice cream sandwich and hand-dipped haagen melt shakes. So it's a little bit of everything, but it's just really simple, great food, and great service. The owners of Pizza Pizza heard about this craze going around the country and wanted to capitalize on it because if you think of how many pizza shops there are within this you know 10 mile square radius dozens how many grilled cheese shops are there zero so they wanted to bring that to the main line we're only in our second week but i have high hopes America has a global reputation for being a free and just country, but our flawed immigration system is far from perfect. Sister Joseph Marie Flynn, author of the book Rescuing Regina, came to Cabrini to speak about the harsh punishments facing some immigrants who came to America seeking a better life. On Tuesday, April 27th, author of the book Rescuing Regina, Sister Joseph Marie Flynn, came to Cabrini to speak to students about the harsh realities facing many immigrants looking to come to America to simply live a better life. In her book, Sister Joseph recounts a true story of an immigrant woman named Regina Bacala, whose tragic story opened Sister Joseph's eyes to the severity of the problem of immigration when they first met in the year 2000. Meet Regina Bacala. She was an asylum seeker from the Democratic Republic I met her in the year 2000 when she and her husband arrived at our parish, and out comes sister, we're both seeking asylum in America. I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting across the table from asylum seekers. That really got to me. I from thought. this point on, Sister Joseph would develop a very close relationship with the Bacala family, and in 2006, she witnessed at first hand an example of the complications many immigrants go through in America. A bitter winter night. March 22nd, 2005, it's five years after they came to St. Mary's, 6.30 p.m., I get a phone call. That's how that book starts. Regina was taking a shower when ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, arrived at a tiny bungalow in Milwaukee to arrest her. David opened the door when he saw the word police on their vests and guns on their hips. Without showing him a warrant for her arrest or a search warrant, both agents quickly began rummaging through the house when a startled Regina emerged from the bathroom, they announced their intent, denied her the right to phone a lawyer, and refused to let her, a victim of multiple rapes by soldiers, change into her clothes or even put on underwear. They took her as she was, in pajamas and slippers, no jacket, no boots, into the Wisconsin winter, leaving behind her terrified family. After David explained what happened, he said to me, I never think something like this will happen in America. In Congo, yes. They do things like this, but in America, never in America. Today, Sister Joseph continues to advocate for immigration reform. Up to 32,400 immigrant detainees, men, women, families, the elderly, the sick, the handicapped, the mentally ill, pregnant women, including traumatized asylum seekers, are treated as criminals and often jailed with convicted criminals in about 250 jails. That's while we're sitting here now. She urges all to become more aware of the situation at hand and become an active member in the fight against the severely flawed system. For more information, check out the website for Justice for Immigrants at www.justiceforimmigrants.org. I'm John Blackwood. Now back to the news desk. The beloved burger stand, the Shake Shack, is planned to come to Philadelphia within the next year. The Shake Shack became an instant sensation when it first opened in Madison Square Garden in Manhattan and will soon occupy a prime location in Center City. 
The lines at the original shack set records as people waited for their much-loved American classics, consisting of burgers, hot dogs, fries, shakes, beer and wine, all for affordable prices. Another reason to be excited to welcome the Shake Shack to Philly dining scene is that they are very serious about going green. So for those of you new to the Shake Shack, prepare to fail, fall in love. Another arriving treat coming to our local area is the cupcake truck. Dia Dolce is a gourmet cupcake stand that travels and it's making its way to Wayne. It will be in the area this week in places like the Whole Foods Market in Devon, Chesterbrook Corporate Center, and Lululemon Athletica in Wayne. Not a good time for calorie counters around here. In other news, six armed men entered the King of Prussia Mall earlier this week. Upper Marion police said that the men came in with handguns and sledgehammers and robbed a high-end watch store in the mall. This was the second time in less than a year that the same store has been robbed by gunmen. Evidently, King of Prussia security did not notice the men with guns and a sledgehammer enter and leave the mall. Police are still investigating. And that was your trip around the block. Now here's Rob for your news across the nation. A huge scandal broke out in the Secret Service this week after 11 members and five military personnel were accused of bringing back prostitutes to a hotel in Colombia as they prepared for President Barack Obama's trip to the Summit of the Americas. Eleven employees of the agency responsible for presidential security went out for drinks two days before Obama's arrival and allegedly brought 11 prostitutes back to the hotel. A hotel manager later found a woman in the room claiming the men owed her money. The security clearances have been pulled while an investigation is still underway. A woman's right to choose could be thrown out the window for women living in Mississippi. Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant has signed a bill requiring that physicians performing abortions in the state must be certified gynecologists. Mississippi has only one abortion facility and if it closes, women seeking abortions would have to leave the state. Governor Bryant said in a statement that he believes all life is precious and wishes the state become abortion free. The law could make the state the first where no abortions can be performed. There's a powerful incentive to do well in Jeffersonville High School in Indiana, where students will be paid $100 for every advanced placement test they pass. Jeffersonville is one of nine high schools selected to split a grant of $7 million from the Indiana Department of Education. In addition, for every AP test a student passes, they earn college credit. Last year, less than 50% of students taking the test actually passed the tests. The school must more than double those results by 2015 under the terms of the grant. It's now up to the students and the teachers to make the dollars make sense. And that was your news from across the nation. Now here's Ali for your trip around the world. Things seem to be winding down for Americans in Afghanistan as Afghan forces showed their capacity to defend their own country when Afghan forces repelled attacks from Taliban forces near Kabul earlier this week. Local security forces, according to analysis, have come far and are some of the best trained in the country after being trained by U.S. Special Forces. Australia, France, and Britain announced plans to pull their troops out months earlier than expected. If President Barack Obama's plan stays on schedule, the United States plans to pull out troops by 2014. The annual cost of funding the Afghan security forces after international forces leave is estimated to be over $4 billion. The U.S. will be paying most of the cost. While things are clearing up in Afghanistan, the United Kingdom is drowning in serious protest. National Health Service workers and civil servants are staging yet another one-day strike in May over their pension dispute. The trade union planning the strike hopes to send a clear message to government ministers that they do not accept plans to force public servants to pay more and work longer for less in retirement. Cabinet Office Minister Francois Maud urges protesters to reconsider their stand because the changes to the pension will eventually save the government tens of billions of pounds. If the protest plan for May takes place, it will include over 200,000 members. While energy prices are an issue, the actual extraction of natural gas from the earth has people upset. The pro process, known as fracking, has triggered two earthquakes near Blackpool on the coast of the United Kingdom. Hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, involves pumping water and chemicals into shale rock to force out underground gases. 
Critics and local groups are also concerned about groundwater contamination from the fracking process. The government-appointed panel recommends, recommends strict conditions and will accept quakes lower than a certain magnitude. The site contains 200 trillion cubic feet of gas, and the government sees shale gas as a valuable energy resource for the future, to the point of risking groundwater contamination and earth tremors. And that was your trip around the world. Let's go to Greg for this week's tech report. Recently, it has come to light that Apple and Samsung will meet out of court to talk possibly about settlement. They have been in court for some time now, and the main focus has been centered on intellectual property theft. Samsung's Galaxy Tab is extremely similar to the Apple's iPad. Hopefully, the whole issue will be settled soon. If you are a Wawa addict like me, then you probably have noticed the new interface system for ordering food. Although it's a completely new interface and looks different, you'll see how much more effective and easier the system is. The system is now based on simpler categories that anyone can follow and also shows a picture of the category that you are choosing. I'm sure after a couple times of ordering, you'll be able to order your food just as fast as before. That's all I have for you today. See you next week with all the latest tech news. Let's go to Mary-Kate for this week's sports update. Welcome to Philly, Pittsburgh. The Philadelphia Flyers rallied for an 8-4 victory Sunday night in Game 3 of the Eastern Conference quarterfinal series. The Flyers and Penguins talked trash and threw punches, resulting in a total of 133 penalty minutes. This was one entertaining hockey game. Tune in next week for the results of the Flyers-Penguins series. Cabrini College offers a men's club lacrosse team for those who want to play lacrosse as a Cavalier. The club has stiff competition with the lack of time commitment needed at the varsity level. The team's last home game of the season is scheduled for this Friday, but if you have an interest in playing, be sure to sign up next fall. The Cabrini College women's lacrosse team had a big win against Cedar Crest College. Defeating the Falcons 18-2 improved their record to 6-1 in the CSAC. With just two games left of the season, the Lady Cavs are making their way to the CSAC championship. The Cavs will return to their home turf this Saturday to play Gwen and Mercy College. Let's wish the spring sports luck as they are finishing up their spring season. Now let's go to Felicia for your entertainment update. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with your entertainment news. This week, Nicki Minaj decided to delete her Twitter due to an overwhelming Twitter beef with her fans. She decided to leave behind her 11 million followers stating, quote unquote, like seriously, there's only so much a person can take. Good effing bye. Also this week, I'm going to be previewing an up and coming artist that you guys should look out for this summer. Her name is Rita Ora. Ora caught the attention of rap mogul Jay-Z in 2009 and has been signed ever since. Aura recently released her new single titled R.I.P., which is written by Drake. If you're interested in checking out the video, you can click on YouTube to check it out. And that's all I have for your entertainment news. I'm Felicia Melvin. Back to the news desk. Thanks for staying tuned in with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Have a great week, Cabrini.